Mm. Right. There's the ECU SVX 94 3.3 liter automatic transmission. Five speed manual. No problem. <clears throat> we fixed! Just ground the wire. Project H6. This is a 1999 Legacy. Wife had a 97. Pretty clean. Not bad for a 99, eh? Not too rusted. Very rare you see that. <clears throat> Got a bit of bubbles here and there. It's dirty here. Superficial. Yeah. These cars are galvanized in and out. Oh, dashboard, airbag. Should we make that thing pop with a battery? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, rats nest, eh? oh, rats. Junk. Anyways. <clears throat> Look at this. The reason why there's more wires not being used is because as of 95, everything was OBD2. Onboard Diagnostics 2 and 95 and down, or 94 I should say, and down was OBD1, Onboard Diagnostic 1. Uh, this car only has two oxygen sensors, one for each bank because it's a six cylinder, flat six, and there's no secondary oxygen sensors like for an OBD2. So, if this was an OBD2, it'd have four oxygen sensors, one, one to sniff the air fuel ratio, and then the last one to see if your catalytic converters are working. But in this case, it's an OBD1, so we only have two to sniff. So there you have it. This, by the way, is the igniter. I figured that out. <clears throat> With these things here. Paper charts. The kid I'm doing this for is, uh, he's like, I don't know, I don't understand how you can do it. It's like a map, people. You know? And it's a street, and it's another street, and this is your parking lot, or your, your head office, or something, blah, blah, blah. Pretty straightforward. So the swap is going to go well. I have no problems with it. <clears throat> uh, putting, dropping this engine into a 2000 Impreza with a 2.2 uh, four banger is no problem because the engine mounts match up. Everything matches up. That's what's nice about the Subarus. They're like Lego. This is one mod we're going to have to do. We're going to have to change the rad's uh, position. Because obviously uh, the rad is usually here. I don't know if you've seen my previous videos of my Forester. My rad comes to about here with the fans. So it's like, no, not going to work. But the EZ 3.0, or, or I should say the EZ30, or the EZ36, which is a 3.0 liter, or a 3.6 liter. The only difference it has between the H4 and the H6 in the, the later model years is that it's only an inch longer the six cylinder is only an inch longer than the common h4 that you find in a subaru so um swapping an h6 that was a three liter would have probably been more feasible more room not as heavy as a 3.3 these engines are freaking heavy but uh surprisingly they still use them for our aircraft applications i'm sure if you google it <clears throat> you'll find it you'll find a lot of aircraft powered by these subaru h6 engines uh, a lot of people do swaps. I think there's even a guy that did a Porsche swap. He put an H6 from a Subaru in a Porsche. I don't know why. I don't know. Not the uh, craziest thing to do. Uh, I've seen uh, Westphalia's or Volkswagen Transports or whatever you want to call them there. They're camper vans with an H6 in it. Thing went, sting, thing went like stink. Guy had a 5-speed manual. If you Google it on YouTube, you'll find it. So, yes. So... This is a Project H6. We're gonna get this thing on, get this thing rolling. So what I'm gonna do today is uh, I'm gonna finish installing my hose wheel that I bought a year ago. I have to go buy some connectors at Home Depot. So, oh shit, are you serious? Oh, wrong fitting. Hmm. Man, bought the wrong size. Damn it. Ah, crap. <laughs> Alright, but anyways, <clears throat> we'll start with that. 
that doesn't work, I'll just go get the proper ones that I need anyways. So there you have it. Here's my rat's nest, I gotta get on it. <clears throat> and as you can see, the guy, the former owner, tapped into the original OBD2. And look, look at this OBD2. The difference between OBD1 and OBD2, look at this. See this? Junk. Extra wine, you don't need it. So anyways. So I gotta get rid of this rat's nest, pull it through the firewall there. Up there, look way up right there, there. The black wire, I gotta pull it out. That goes into the engine bay. And that's about it. So this is where the fun starts. So, yep. So we'll start with that. Cut all this off. I think I already cut one off yesterday. What did I do with it? I didn't do it. Tell you how it is. Let's see. No, the day before. Not yesterday. Just I took a break. I wasn't feeling well. Tired. So here you have it. That's one of the connectors that goes in the back of the ECU. So, see, look, I cut, <clears throat> what I did is I kept the, uh, I cut the wires that were in the, this car originally so I can uh, cross-reference them. If any problems come back, I have my, the Outback papers here so I can uh, refer to in case uh, something happens. But no, it's pretty straightforward. It's not too hard. OBD1 is OBD1. Oh, OB1 Kenobi. So there you have it. All right, so I'm going to attack this. And uh, we'll go from there. So, enough with this boring blah blah stuff. Yeah, so here we go. Got my connectors there. See, yellow, B59, B61 yellow, B62 yellow, B60 yellow. Okay, there. See? Don't complicate things here. That's one. One, two, three, four, five, six. See? Six, twelve, twelve. So that is B60. See here, I'm going to have B. So everything has B. So I have a B8. That's going to go to this one. So B8. It's going to be the plug 8. This one here. If you go to B8, it says white black. Go to B8, which is second from the left. And you see, kind of hard to do this, it's dark in here. Come ah, on, there it is. Black and white. Can't really see anything. I'm gonna go to macro. Alright, that's much better. See? So here, B8, B connector, which is 60. B60 yellow, yes it is yellow. So it's gonna be connector number eight. So connector number eight. Oh, man. There it is right there. Hold on. I'm gonna show it to you guys, it's dark in here. B8, B8. Come on, come on, show yourself. Piece of junk. Junk. Anyways, you get the picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tag these, it'll be much easier when I go to wire in the other side which is wiring to the 22, 2.2 which is 2200cc. Here I have the engine control module so I have to go see A, B134, B135, B136, I got some stuff there if you look here. Uh, function indicator, fuel pump relay, blah blah blah. No stinking automatic on this. Vehicle speed sensor, I'm gonna need that. Check connector, don't need that. Diagnosis connector, don't need that. What would you want? Fuel pump relay, don't need that. Fuel gauge sub module, blah, blah, blah. Fuel tank pressure. Well, we're not gonna need that because changing the engine control module. So basically what you gotta do is you gotta grab the wiring that's all here. That goes to this ECU. Swap it over to this ECU. See, look, this this wire is going to this ECU because OBD1 and you have OBD2 and blah 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 and all that crap. Look, so many connectors are here. A couple of there. There's shitload more connectors for OBD2. So, and resistors, connectors. Oh, stuff. 
Isn't that frickin' dandy, eh? So, anyways. Let's figure this video out. Right so, go back here. This is connected to V60. It only has 12 pins. So, I'm gonna tag this one. V60. As I said, it'll be easy to, to differentiate them when I go from the car to the next. So, I'll tag it. V60. Kind of have to write. I don't find one behind the camera. So, it'll be. Yeah, see together. Anyways, you get the picture. I gotta get a smaller sharpie. I gotta find one. So I'm gonna tag all my connectors. There is one right here. Is a big mofo. Come on. Here we go. See? Big mofo. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I got thirteen prongs in this one, so it's B62. So. B62. There you have it. B62. B62 on here is D. Let's find a D. See if it's right. D, 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 D. Find a D. Find a D. Find a D. Here you go. D18. That D18. Yeah, D18, which is D18, which is brown and black. And you look, here it is. Brown and black. B18. Put it on there, B18. So it's one, two, three, four, five. So you go one, two, three, four, five from the left. And there you have it. That's how you distinguish the difference. So this is where I'm at. <clears throat> oh jeez, hold on. So there you have it. This is where we're at. Rat's nest. Funky, isn't it? There you go underneath the dash. Look at this. No rust. Car's in excellent shape. I don't understand why the kid just didn't drive this car. Price it paid for it. Anyways, not my car. Out back. These are fun cars, man. They're great. Anyways, before we took everything apart, everything worked. Power locks, power windows, uh, heated mirrors, uh, heated seats. Hey, look. Oh, you took the console. Anyways, this car has heated seats. They both work. So, Subarus are pretty, uh, pretty good cars. They're pretty reliable. Except for the engines. Stupid early H4 double R rated cam which was from 96 up to 98 were problematic. Then you had the single overhead cam, which are these heads are from, are problematic from 2000 up to about 2002, 2003. And as the years go, everything gets better. But the H6 wow, 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 is a really reliable engine. No problems with it whatsoever. And What's nice about this EG33, you know, you can stick the pistons from the 2.2 or the 22 EJ22T. You can stick those pistons in there, lower your compression, and either put on a turbocharger or a supercharger. Cobb Tuning's tried it with a believe which is an EZ30, but. Uh, you had to get pistons made, I believe, and rods and blah 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 blah. Everything from an EJ, from an EJ22T, will fit into this engine, and you could either supercharge it, like I said, or turbocharge it. So there you have it. Yeah, looks like an octopi. Stupid octopi, octopus. There you have it, and these engines are pretty cool too. They have a flapper inside here, which is in the middle. You can't really see it. I have to show you a picture. It's a flapper that opens and closes. It's really cool. The low RPM, I believe it's open. So you get the good distribution of air, and as you go up in RPMs, it closes. Shortens your runners. So at low RPM, you get long runners going on. 
because you have your dual uh, uh, throttle body here. So at a lower RPM, I believe wouldn't know. Oh. Anyways, you know what I mean. I'm tired. So that's what it is. You have a flapper here that opens and closes. You can see right here, vacuum. I don't know what it is. I should probably take this plate off. But uh, I need to take this engine out. There's a leaking hen gasket, so I'm going to take this puppy apart. And I can tell you right now, these engines are really well made. Here's an EJ25. Alright, I apart. That's the project that I want to start on my car. Well, on my car. On a car. So basically, see EJ25. Right there, here's your pistons here. Anyways, that's half of your block. I took out the, uh, the castings in there. They are casted. The uh, cast iron liners are casted when they uh, pour in this aluminum. They shove the cast iron sleeves into the mold. Into the, um, it's like a ceramic slurry, whatever, that sets up. Investment casting process. They shove the, um the liners in and then they pour the molten aluminum and it forms around these um, the castings, the cast the sleeves. So I took those out with my milling machine. This is a project I was doing and I stopped but I want to continue because I have 2.5 turbo pistons and I have a Mazda Millennia supercharger and I want to supercharge but but I was thinking I'm going for that uh, famous saying there, no replacement for displacement. I was thinking of supercharging an easy 30 or maybe even an easy 36, 3.6 liter. So, fun projects. Um, more to come. Like I said, when I pull this puppy out, I'll show it to you. It's a decent engine. It's uh, These are timing belt. Then you have two overhead cams on this engine, and it's uh, a chain in between, but you have a belt that meets between the left hand and right hand and the crank. But the EZ30, which is uh, from 2005 up, is a chain, timing chain, and the EZ36 is a timing chain. And the new EZ, or what do you call it? Is it the EG or EV? I forget. The new engine that came out, that Super came out for 2011, is basically a EZ36 uh, chopped off two cylinders, boop, and they turn it into a four cylinder, basically. So, anyways, I guess for reliability, because the EZ30 and the EZ36 are very reliable engines, and that's why if I buy another Subaru, it's going to be a six. So either a Tribeca or a or an Outback. The H4s are finished with me. I blew one up already, and that's it. So, anyways, project's gonna keep on going here. 